So the spirit of FailCon is sort of unconventional for a lot of conferences where we talk about failure and kind of have a lighthearted attitude about it. But failure in terms of privacy uh, has more dire consequences. And I think that was maybe some of the message that you were trying to convey. So how do companies fail their customers when they start doing these surveillance uh, transactions, as you call it. Well, I think I think that when companies don't stand with their users and instead put themselves opposed to their users, they're they're kind of treading on dangerous ground, right? When it comes to your users' privacy, your interest ought to be your users' interest. And you know, the first thing that means is telling your user what's going on, um, making sure that they understand how the transaction works. Um, and giving them some real choices about how they want, you know, whether they want to participate in this, how they want to participate in it, and at what level. I think those are all really simple, straightforward things. I, I firmly believe that companies that stand with their customers as opposed to against their customers or sneaking things around their customers will ultimately be better off in the long run. Facebook comes up often um, as a company that sort of shares first and asks questions later. Um, sometimes there's consequences, sometimes not. Uh, what would your advice to them be? Well, we talk to Facebook quite a bit, so they know my advice to them. I guess my, my advice to other people is that just because Facebook gets away with it, um, don't think you will. I mean, once you get to have a half a billion users, you can probably get away with some stuff that you can't do as a startup or you shouldn't do as a startup. I don't think anybody at Facebook would say that they are really happy and comfortable with the way that they handled privacy. I think they have stumbled into some stuff that they really would just as soon not had to deal with. Um, and I, so I think that, you know, A, not everybody can pull off what Facebook can pull off, and B, Facebook themselves, I think would have rather handled some of this privacy stuff differently. I mean, you know, they've got a fundamental business model, which is about watching what you do and what you like and, and monetizing that. Um, but but they, they, I think along the way, made a lot of missteps that, that, that would have let them have the fundamental business model without a lot of the collateral damage. And I, I think they would, well, they probably wouldn't admit that because then lawyers would come after them. But I think privately they would admit that. Um, um, so, you know, this, the, the discussion of privacy sort of seems abstract until somebody has a personal experience. Um, so can you bring this down to earth a little bit and share some of the just case studies of how, you know, unauthorized use of people's information has had bad consequences? Sure. I mean, I think that to me, the, the, the best, well, there's a bunch of good stories, but one of them has to do with Google Buzz. When Google decided to run out its social networking system and it decided that, um, it knew who your best friends were and that your best friends were the 10 people who you talked to the most. And so therefore those people were gonna have access to what you did over this social network, kind of be, be your first friends. Um, well, well, what did they learn? Well, they learned that, that often people communicate a lot with people who aren't their friends. Um, and, and in the instance of, a, of the, the biggest instance was a woman who had a, a, an ex-spouse who was a batterer, um, who she had to communicate with a lot because they were negotiating um, child custody and other things, but who she definitely didn't want to know what she was doing every day. And these are the kinds of things where, you know, really working with your customers, thinking about your customers and taking their side, like, that should have, you know, that's the kind of thing you really want to avoid. I mean, serious consequences. Um, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, you could see a lot of other similar situations. I think the other thing is that people really not understanding in Facebook how to, and Facebook making it very, very hard to differentiate which audiences saw what information about you. They've just announced a series of reforms that they think that they're saying are going to make that easier. I haven't used them yet to know, but they're finally moving that way. This idea that, you know, you might have some things that are appropriate for your college friends that aren't appropriate for your boss um, and want to be that person, right? You don't want to be I mean, I think that Facebook is supposed to be about friends and relationships and building real relationships. You know, if you if you want, um, it, it, it encourages you to be a platform where you share a lot about yourself, but, but without recognizing the distinction between the various audiences, I think they've caused a lot of trouble for people. I, the example I mentioned was a, a person who contacted us recently who had, who had been fired because of some information that was on, um, I don't think it was even on her Facebook page, I think it was on somebody who was a friend of hers but had a picture of her in a, a burlesque show and 
there she was and she got fired from an educational institution, um, even a college. I mean, they're the, they're the pieces that, you know, um, many more institutions are uptight about that kind of stuff than you might guess. I mean, everybody gets, you know, that if you're a school teacher and, a, you know, working with little kids, there's going to be a, a, a standard of behavior. But um, we've seen people in far different kinds of jobs where you wouldn't think people were that uptight. Um, really having you know lots of jobs and severe consequences so um, I think you know from where we sit because people call us when they get into trouble we have a quite a different view of um, you know all of the sharing and that it doesn't and nobody cares and there's no real problems and it's just the age of trans you know the, the you know the age of the exhibitionist um, yeah it, it rings hollow a little bit just to hear Mark Zuckerberg say well I'm trying to create a more open society where you just have one identity for everybody um, it's easy to say you know when you're a billionaire um, and people you know and I'm not gonna pick on him in particular but it's easy to say when you have a quote-unquote normal uh, background when you're not gay when you're not you know doing uh, things that you know are private I think people deserve to have different personas I think that they they do and I think if we if we build a world where nobody gets to have different personas where I think we're, we're, we're diminishing our world right I mean you should be able to be a school teacher and do things that your students don't know about in your off hours you should be able to be you know, you should be able to present yourself, uh, you know, uh, without your whole history being presented with you all the time. When we were all teenagers, I mean, uh, Eric Schmidt was hilarious when he said, well, we should just be able to pick a new identity once we get through adolescence. And I think that resonated with a lot of people, um, and um, included. And, you know, but I just think that if we build a society where that's really your only option, um, then we've we've actually not built a better society for ourselves. We've, we've built a worse one in some ways. I mean, it's one of the ways that, you know, I. I you know, I'm a, I, you know, kind of contrasting that with uh, with the kind of Facebook model with something like LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is a technology that is designed to let you control who you are, what's what you do. It's your professional person. They don't want to know what you do on the weekends. They don't want you to be putting that on LinkedIn. Why? Because they want to be the place where your professional face is. I think that's really a great. You know, I mean, I'm. I don't have any skin in the game, but I think that's actually a model that's really much more reflective of who people are. People want to be able to have a professional face. They want to have a personal face. They want to be. They want to be one thing to their college friends, another thing to their their friends from graduate school, another thing from their high school friends, uh, and, and another thing for their family. So the issue of privacy is obviously one that's very uh, dear to EFF as protectors. Um, another one that is really important but is sort of gets lost in cerebralville I think for the general public is that of net neutrality so could you help bring that down to earth a little bit and just tell people why it's important yeah sure net neutrality is this idea although it gets defined different ways it's basically this idea that the people who carry your bits across the internet and who carry your messages across the internet should be in the business of delivering your messages um, they should be in the business of your ISP should be in the business of getting you to Google as fast as they get you to Bing as fast as they get you to Facebook or anywhere else you want to go. Your ISP shouldn't be in the business of um, deciding which of those you get to. That's the idea of neutrality. Um, and the concern about net neutrality is that some of the major telecoms, AT&T for instance, have said that they would like to be in the position where they have they can go to Google and say, hey, Google, you know, nice search engine you got there. Uh, why don't you give us a little money and we'll make sure it loads real fast. Otherwise, Bing is going to load faster for people or it's going to load better for people. Um, and putting the ISP in a position where they get to basically negotiate how the, well the Internet works for you by squeezing money out of the places you want to visit. That's that's the fear for net neutrality. Um, EFF is a strong, strong supporter of net neutrality in practice. Um, and we were some of the ones who, you know, an example of this uh, concern is that um, some users discovered a few years ago, and EFF helped develop this idea, that Comcast was limiting BitTorrent. So people who were using BitTorrent to download the, the latest Linux distro or whatever they were doing were finding that that it was looking like the site that they were going to wasn't working very well. Well, it turned out Comcast was getting in the way to try to limit uh, BitTorrent because they didn't like people using BitTorrent. 
Um, that's a classic example of non-neutral behavior. Comcast first lied about it and had to come clean about it, and now they claim they don't do it anymore. And um, so that, that's kind of the classic example, and we really care a lot about that. Um, the concern that we have is that at least some of the proposals that have come forward to try to fix net neutrality um, really just want to make the FCC god of the internet. And as God of the internet, it will decide what's a good practice and what's not a good practice. I, I'm nervous about giving the authority to decide what's okay to do and what's not okay to do on the internet to any government agency. Well, and there's so much lobbying money that goes into it as well. And the FCC has a bad reputation of being a captured agency by who? By AT&T and Verizon, the very people we want them to regulate. So I think we have to think, you know, the, the problem is very worthy of thinking about and, 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 and serious thought, and it's a hard problem. Um, some of the solutions I'm afraid that have been proposed, I worry, are Trojan horse solutions that could be worse than the disease. Now, it's all kind of in flux right now. I don't think, you know, after the next election, uh, Congress is going to probably change, and then people will have to evaluate. Um, there's some complicated stuff about which part of the FCC regulatory authority ought to be the right part of, the, of it. There's a lot of policy wonky and law details of it. But at the end of the day, net neutrality is a really important thing and we need to work toward it, but I think it also requires us to look carefully at the solutions that are being offered. Call me a free market guy, but uh, it seems to me that competition uh, would make some of these practices untenable. I think that's right. And one of the concerns that a lot of people have raised is that, you know, there's really only the two, there's Verizon and AT&T, the kind of duopoly for a lot of the broadband internet service in the country. And a lot of people have pointed out and that if we actually had real antitrust law, robust antitrust law that, that you know, that really built up these markets, because right now they're really not, you know, the law has, has shifted and the way that the FCC has regulated has really helped build up these duopolies um, that just really changing some of those rules to get competition back in the space could be one way to solve a lot of these kinds of problems. I think that's a great idea, but that is as, in some ways as hard a thing to do as giving the FCC authority over the internet. So we're in a position where there's a, 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 a couple of good ways that we could think to get out of this and neither of them are easy paths. Well, Cindy, thank you to you and to EFF for fighting the good fight on so many issues. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, the one thing I did want to say is that, especially for the Failcon folks, you know, EFF talks to young startup companies and people in the mid-range a lot about issues around privacy and innovation. Um, and we, 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 we meet with folks. If, if people are interested in building privacy in from the ground up, we, we're happy to. I mean, we've got not unlimited time, but we're happy to sit down with people, think about what their policies ought to be point out to them some things that might be dangers that we've seen from kind of where we've sat for 20 years uh, in the internet. And so, you know, we're not just the people who are going to accuse you when you do the wrong thing. We'd like to also be the people who help you do the right thing.